Hi, my name is Steven. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add a booking functionality to your WordPress website using the Booknetic plugin. So if you have a WordPress website and you want your client to be able to book your services through your website, I'm going to show you how you can do that in this video. So this is basically the plugin that we're going to be adding on your website. After we finish, it's going to look exactly like this. You can see here that I have an example here for you. So this here is a location. You can see that you can select a location from here. So basically I have two locations here. You can add as many locations as you want. If you have only one location, you can just have one. So if they choose any of this location from here, they can choose the staff that they want from that location. If you have multiple staff, they can choose any of the staff. Maybe they have been there before. They like a particular staff. They can choose that staff. But if they don't know any of the staff, they can choose any staff. And this will randomly assign a specific staff to them. So here is the list of the services that you provide. And here your client can choose any of these services. You can see here this is physical health and this is rehabilitation. You can see all the services under this category. This is basically a category and this is another category so let's say for example I choose physiotherapy here you can see here that they have extra services under this physiotherapy there's a foot rub that they can also choose for $20 if they want if they don't want that they don't need to select it let me go back here and choose something else so let's say for example if I choose spot injury and from here you can see that there is no extra services here so all the services that have extra service will show the extra service but if they don't have any extra services it's not going to show any extra services so let me go back here and just choose this physiotherapy and select the extra service so you can see that the physiotherapy is $120 if I select the extra service here for example is going to make it up to $140 and then I'll go to next and from here your client can see the available dates your client can go ahead and pick any of the date that they desire and from here they will choose the time that will work best for them these are the available time on this specific date so let me just choose a random time so once your clients have finished filling the information if you have a privacy policy like here they have to click on this link and that is going to open another that link or then to read that privacy policy just like this and then after reading it they can close that and come back here and click on agree to agree that they have read the privacy policy so go ahead and click on next and from here there's only two options here so if they have a gift card uh, or a coupon code they can enter it here to get a discount but if they don't have one you can see here that the physiotherapy section is $120 and the extra service which is foot rub is $20 and that comes $140 and here there is a deposit of 50% of the total amount to be able to book this appointment. So you can pay the deposit or you can select the full amount if you want to pay the full amount. So this deposit is actually very good because sometimes clients will book an appointment and they will not show up. So in that privacy policy, you make it clear that if you book an appointment and you don't show up, your 50% is non-refundable. So that way, when they pay that 50% or if they don't show up, you have their 50% of their money. So they are not wasting your time and you are not wasting their time. So from here, they can choose how they want to pay for that 50% can choose a credit card option or you can choose PayPal so if they choose a credit card option they can click on confirm appointment that's going to open a new pop-up and then from this pop-up they can fill in their details here you can see here they can fill in their details and then they can move to the next step or they can go back if they want to use the uh, paper option here you can click on paper and then you are going to click on confirm booking and that's going to open a pop-up for you to log into your paper account or you can use your credit card by clicking on this use credit card option here and filling your information so you can see this is a really really good plugin and simple plugin to use so i'm going to show you how you can add this on your wordpress website so this is actually a continuation of the video that i posted earlier you can see here this is a multi-vendor appointment booking website so in this case you have a multi-vendor appointment booking website where other people can come on your website and sign up and use your booking services for their own services so that their own client can book their services using the booking services that you are providing for them so I explained this in this video. So if you don't have a WordPress website, you can go ahead and watch this video. You can get your domain and hosting and then you can log into that WordPress website and then you follow up with the tutorial that I'm doing now. So if you watch this video, you can see that I said that I will explain the client dashboard. So this video that I'm making now is basically explaining that client dashboard. And it's also a video for people that just want to add a booking services to their WordPress website. So if you have a WordPress website and you don't want to provide booking services to all 
other people that is looking for a booking service so let's say you're a barber or you're a lawyer or a consultant but you want to add a booking service to your website so that people can book your service this is also a video for you so you can watch this video and then you'll be able to add this type of booking service to your website let's go ahead and log into another wordpress website so i can show you how you can add this to your website so here you can see that i have another wordpress website it doesn't matter which theme you are using you can also still go ahead and add this booking plugin to your website so this website is built with dv so i'm going to add that on this website you can see here that i have this button here and when you click on it nothing happens so that's where i'm going to add the book now button so that when people click on it they can go to your booking page and start booking the appointment so before we get started the first thing we need to do is actually go and get the plugin that we're going to need so the plugin that we're going to need is called the booknetic plugin so we're actually going to go and purchase that plugin to do that all you need to do is to go to your browser and type wp lifestyle forward slash booknetic like this i will also leave the link in the description box below so you can just click on the link and it will bring you to this page right here and from here this is the plugin that we need we just need the regular license and then if you watch this video you can see that if you want to create a multi-vendor appointment booking system with booknetic sax version that means when you're on this page instead of buying the regular license you are going to buy the extended license which is this one right here but for this video we just need the regular license so i'm going to go ahead and purchase this license actually i'm not going to purchase it again because i already have one so go ahead and purchase the license add it to your card and then go ahead and pay for it if you already have an account you can sign into your account to uh, purchase the license if you don't have an account you can quickly go ahead and create one so i already have an account so i'm going to go ahead and sign into my account and then i'm going to download the plugin because i already have the plugin in my account okay so once you've gone ahead and sign up or sign in and purchase the plugin and then you're going to hover over your username like this and then you're going to click on download and then from this download page you can see all the plugins that you've purchased from this website you can see here that i have the booknetic here i'm going to go ahead and click on this download button and then i'm going to download installable wordpress files only you can see that it's downloading over here and then i'm also going to download the license certificate and purchase code the pdf version i'm going to click on that because this is where we're going to get the code we are going to use to activate this plugin so once that is downloaded you are going to go back to your wordpress website and then we are going to click on plugins and then we're going to click on add new and then from here you are going to click on upload plugin okay so from here all you need to do is to select the file that we just downloaded and then you are going to uh, click on choose file or you are just going to drag it and drop it here so i'm going to drag it and then i'm going to click on install now so go ahead and click on activate plugin and now you can see that we have a new option here that is called booknetic go ahead and click on it and it's going to ask you to enter your purchase code so now go back to the pdf file that we downloaded and double click on it and that is going to open the pdf file like this and then you are going to go ahead and copy the purchase code this is the item purchase code you are going to copy this code and then you are going to go back to your wordpress website and then you are going to paste in the code here and how did you find out about us you are going to just maybe say youtube because you are watching this video on youtube and then if you want to subscribe to their email letter you can add your email here if not you are going to go ahead and click on install so you can see that the plugin has been installed successfully and this is your booknetic dashboard if you want to go back to wordpress you are going to click on this wordpress button right here and this is going to take you back to your wordpress dashboard and then if you want to go back to your booknetic dashboard you are going to click on booknetic here and that will take you to this dedicated dashboard for your booknetic so this is basically exactly what your client dashboard is going to look like for those of you that have watched my previous video on the multi-vendor appointment booking website so i'm going to walk you guys through every single step on this dashboard you can see all the steps that we have here so i'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through each and every one of them so we're going to go ahead and get started with the company details so we're actually going to go through these five steps here for this pop-up here to disappear so we're going to go to the company details here i'm going to click on company details so let's say maybe you're a therapist or something and you want to add this booking plugin to your website so that people can book all your services so i'm going to just name this company and uh, wp therapy just for fun so i've gone ahead and fill in all this information here so go ahead and fill in your company information this is just randomly generated information so the company name is wp therapy so from here if you want to add your logo you can go ahead and select your logo you can see here that i added this logo here and then if you want to uh, display the logo on your booking panel you are going to click on this button here to turn it on so that this logo will display on your booking panel instead of the booknetic logo so once you are done here you are going to click on save changes and then we're going to go to the 
next one which is going to be the business hour and then we're going to click on the next one which is going to be the business hours and then from here we are going to select the business hours here so uh, monday uh, we are open 9 a.m to 6 p.m so you can go ahead and change this business hours to whatever you want so maybe on monday we are open at 8 instead of 9 i'm just going to leave this like this but you can go ahead and change it to uh, whatever you want and then if you want to add a break you can go ahead and click on this add a break so let's say on monday uh, you guys take your break at uh, 1 p.m and then resume back on 2 p.m so you have like one hour break so once you select a break here that means that this time that you selected as your break time is not going to be available on the booking panel for people to book an appointment if you don't need a break you don't need to add any break you can easily just click on this button to remove it and then you are going to click on save changes and then the next one we are going to uh, create a location we are going to click on create a location here you can see that we don't have any locations right here and if you have more than one location you can go ahead and create as many locations as you want so i'm going to create my first location so let's say i have two locations or three locations but i'm just going to create two for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to name this location maybe uh i'm just going to say uh, location number one so I've gone ahead and give this location a name. So I gave this one location number one, and then I'm going to add the address here. The address is 100 WP Street, and then here you add the phone number and you can add description for this location if you want, but I'm going to leave that blank. And then if you have an image for this location, you can go ahead and add that image as well. So I'm going to browse an image here and just add a random image for this location. And then once you finish, you can go ahead and click on add location. And now you can see that we have a location here. So I'm going to go ahead and add one more location so i've gone ahead and add the details for this particular location so this is location number two and the address is 200 wp avenue and i have the phone number here and i also selected a random image for that location so i'm going to click on add location and here you can see that we now have two locations here so let's go ahead and click on the next one is to create a staff so as you can see here that we don't have any staff here so we're going to click on add a staff so i'm going to add myself so here all you really need to do is to put the name here and then put the email address the phone number and the profession here and then here if you want that staff to be able to log into this wordpress website you can click on allow login and then you can give them access to uh, the login that you already have or you can just create a new login for them if you click on this create a new login it's going to use their name as their username and then you are going to create a password here for them and then you are going to give them uh, this password that's what they're going to be using to log in here but if you don't want them to log into to uh, this dashboard then you are going to turn this off so from here if you want to add an image for that stuff you can go ahead and add the image so i'm going to go and browse an image of myself and then i'm going to add it here so from here you are going to select the location where this stuff is going to be available to work so let's say for example location number one if you select only location number one they're only going to be available to be booked from that location number one so i'm going to add the two locations from here and then from here you are going to select the services that apply to this particular staff you can see here that we don't have any services yet so i'm going to skip this and then if you want to write a note here maybe a little bit about the staff you can add that in here so i'm going to go ahead and click on add staff so now you can see that we have a staff here and that is basically how you can add uh, a staff and then if you want to add another staff you can go ahead and pretty much do the same thing from here and then you can add the details again so let's say for example you are adding a staff and that particular staff have like a different availability compared to the general availability that we just set up earlier all you need to do is to click on this weekly schedule here and then you are going to configure a specific timesheet for that staff so once you click on it you can see this is our general uh, schedule here and what you can do you can change this to whatever the availability for that staff is so that that staff will be only available to be booked within those specific period of time also you can also add like a special day by clicking on this special day for that particular staff and then from here you can select which date they are going to have that special uh, availability maybe like on the 17th of august for example they're only available to work for one hour or so and then you can add that here and this is going to override the weekly schedule that you have here and then for the breaks you can go ahead and add the break here as well and then if you want to remove that special day you can just click on remove special day and click on delete so i'm going to go ahead and close this so i'm only going to leave this one stuff here for now and then we're going to go to the greatest service 
So from here, we're going to add the first category. So let's say maybe, for example, the first category we're going to add here is like something like maybe physical health. So this is for like physio and all those kind of stuff. You're going to click on this check mark here. And if you want to add another category, you're going to click on this plus sign that is next to the categories. And then we're going to add another category here. So maybe we're going to call this one maybe chronic conditions or something like that. So I've gone ahead and added the name of this category. So you can see here that we now have two categories here. And then what you can do now is from here, you can go ahead and add services under these categories. You can also move this around to anywhere you want. You can drop it here and drop it over here. You can move it around to anywhere you want. So maybe here from here, you want to add another category under this physical health. So once you click this button, it's going to ask you, what do you want to add? So if you want to add a subcategory under this uh, physical health, you're going to click on category and now you're going to enter a category name but that's not what i want to do i want to add a service under this category right so i'm going to click a service so maybe the service now is going to be like uh, maybe uh, physiotherapy or something like that so now you can see that i've added physiotherapy here as the name and then i'm going to put the price for this uh, maybe is maybe 120 dollars and here the deposit that is required before they can book the service so this is 100%. They have to pay this $120. Or maybe you want to make it 50%. Or maybe you want to put a dollar amount. And then you can just use dollar instead of the percent. But I prefer the percent. So I'm going to choose 50%. And if you want to charge a tax. Maybe you want to charge 12% of tax. You are going to add 12% over here. But if you don't want to charge anything. You can just leave this blank. So I'm going to leave the tax blank for now. But it's up to you. Depending on where you are located. Maybe you are required to charge a tax. So you are going to add how many percent you are going to charge them. In this box and then from here you are going to choose the service duration for this particular service this physiotherapy and maybe this is just maybe 60 minutes section i'm going to click one hour here which is going to be 60 minutes and then you can set the time slot here if you want but i'm going to leave it on default and then you can also set a buffer time here and uh, if you want so this is going to be the uh, time between and time after the service before the next service can start if you want to do that maybe you can just add like maybe 20 minutes here before the next service can start will be like 20 minutes later or maybe like 15 minutes later i don't know this is going to be like up to you and then if you want to hide this price in the booking panel you are going to check this box but i'm going to leave this on and then if you also want to hide this service duration you are going to check this box as well and then if this is a recurrence uh, payment you are going to select this uh, recurring button here and that is going to uh, charge people monthly weekly or daily but i'm going to turn this off this is a one-time fee and then the capacity that means that the person is coming alone but if you select this group that means that that person will be able to uh, bring someone else with them and then here you can choose minimum and maximum so here minimum is one and you can choose maybe they can bring up to five people uh, once you have this for this service that means when they're coming they can bring up to five people and they will have that option to select how many people they are going to bring on that service so i'm going to leave this for this service for now so you can see how this work later when we are testing this out so i'm going to click on save service here and now you can see that we have that service here and you can also go to this service and click on this pencil icon here to edit the service and you can see that from here we have these service details we also have a staff so if you have multiple staff from here you can select the staff that is going to uh, be available to provide this service let's say a particular staff so let's say you, if you have like maybe two or three staff and let's say steven for example so let's say he's really good and he doesn't charge 120 dollars for this service he charged 150 dollars and that means you are going to come here and click on this specific price and now you are going to change this 120 to 150 dollars so so that any client that selects steven will be charged 150 dollars instead of 120 dollars so that's basically what this means and if you want to use that option is here for you so i'm going to turn that off for now and you can see here we only have one staff so it doesn't really matter but if you have multiple staff you can you can come here and assign specific staffs to that service that you just added and then time shift here if you want to configure a specific time for that service you can also do that from here and if you want to add an extra service for this particular service you can add this here as well you can add maybe i'm just going to put this as a sample or something like that and then the price for this will be like ten dollars and then the duration will be maybe uh 10 minutes and then the quantity here we're going to select just one maybe they just get one of these and you can click on save extra and now you can see that they have an extra service here i will save that service so whenever someone is trying to book the service they will get that option to select the extra and if they want the extra they can select it and if they don't want it they don't have to select that option 
So now let me add one more service here and then I'll add maybe two or three services here and we can move to the next stage. So I'm going to click on this plus icon again and then I'm going to add additional service. So I've gone ahead and gave this service a name and from here you're going to select the category. We have uh, chronic conditions and we have physical health. So I'm going to select physical health and then this service is uh, $150 for maybe one hour 25 minutes and then the deposit required to book the appointment is 50 percent and then there is no tax and then if you want to add a buffer time you can go ahead and do that here so i can add maybe 20 minutes here and then i'm going to uh, leave this as standalone and then i'm going to uh, go ahead and select the staff we only have one staff so i'm going to leave that staff here and then i'm going to add an extra no maybe no extra for this one and then i'm going to click on save service so now you can see that we have two services here and then for the current conditions we're going to go here and also add a service as well i'm going to click on add a service i'm going to call this one sports injury rehabilitation and then i'm going to select the category here chronic conditions and then here this one is going to be maybe 250 dollars for uh two hours maybe and then the time slot here the buffer time is going to be 30 minutes and uh, the 50 percent required to book the appointment and then here i'm going to just choose this one the capacity is just going to be a loan and then i'm going to add the service and click on add service here and here we only have one staff so you don't need to select any staff here unless if you have multiple staff then you can select the staff that provide this particular service and then we're going to click on save service so now we have this service here i'm going to add just one more so we can get the options so i'm going to give the uh, service a name i'm going to call this one chronic condition management and then i'm going to select chronic conditions here as the category and then i'm going to give this one 180 dollars and the deposit is 50 dollars uh 50 percent and then the duration here will be maybe uh, one hour 30 minutes and i'm going to change a buffer time here for uh 25 minutes and then i'm going to leave this one capacity is going to be a loan and then i'm going to uh, click on save service and if you have any uh let's say description to add here so maybe you want to explain this uh service for people you can come in here and post the description you can post a little bit of description about this service here so people will know exactly uh the service that they are booking this is very important actually so we are going to click on save service here so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go to a dashboard here then we're going to go through all these settings here so we're going to start with the dashboard you can see this is your dashboard this is what it's going to look like you're going to be able to see your appointments and you're going to see the durations you're going to see revenue you're going to see pending appointments and you can see that for today for tomorrow yesterday this week last week this month this year and you can also create a custom one which you can select which day that you want to see over here and here you can see your upcoming appointments you can also see your pending appointments here as well that's pretty much it for dashboard and your reporting is going to be pretty much self-explanatory you're going to see everything and how everything is working here you can see your report by the number of appointments your report by the number of earnings you're going to see all that analytics here and then the appointments are going to show here so currently right now we don't have any appointments so you're not going to see anything here so we'll come back here when we book an appointment and then the calendar you are going to see your calendar here and you're going to see all your appointments on your calendar here you can also add an appointment by clicking on this plus button here and then you can manually add an appointment let's say a client called you and they want to book an appointment over the phone you can do that by adding the appointment on this calendar and then the next one is payments and payments are basically uh, where you're going to see all the payments here uh, so we are going to skip to customers and this is where you're going to see all the list of your customers we don't have any customers right here so we're going to go to services so this is basically the one that we just finished this is all your services we just finished doing this one so this one is very easy and then you have the list view here which is like this or you can just choose different type of view here if you want and then you're going to have this type of view like this or you can click on graphic view and it's going to show like this i prefer this one because you can move it around and rearrange it and then your staff this is where you're going to see all your staff if you want to edit anything about a staff you can click on this uh, three dots right here and you're going to click on edit staff and then from here maybe you can make changes to uh, the staff you can see here that this uh, staff is offering these services maybe there's a service that you don't want this staff to offer you can remove that from here just by clicking on this uh, button right here and then you can remove that 
that you can also add another one by clicking on this button right here and then you can also modify the weekly schedule or special days and once you finish you can click on save staff so that's pretty much how you can update your staff and the same thing goes with your location you click on the location here you can see the locations that we have you can modify the location and make changes to the location by clicking on the edit button and then you are going to make any changes that you want and then you are going to click on add location and then for the coupon code this is where you can come and create a coupon code for your clients and then you can give it to them they can use it to get discount maybe 10 percent discount or 20 percent discount this is basically self-explanatory you are going to put the code here you are going to put the discount maybe you want to give them 20 percent and then this applies to date and then you are going to choose a date when the discount is going to be valid if you don't put any date here this is going to be for lifetime that means they can use the discount anytime so maybe 20 off is the uh, coupon code this is the code they're going to enter to get that 20 percent off and then here the limit you are going to put a user limit maybe you want them to use it just once or maybe twice and then they are going to be once per customer you are going to click this button then you can filter this for a service here so if you select a service all the services that you filtered here is not going to apply to those services you can also do the same thing for a staff it's not going to apply to some specific staff if you have uh, multiple staffs as well so that's pretty much how you can create a coupon code so i'm going to cancel this right now because i don't really uh, need to create a coupon code so i'm going to cancel this so for the gift card the same thing goes with the gift card and then notifications this is where you are going to create all your notifications so here we are going to focus on email notification if you want to create an sms notification you are going to follow the same process if you want to create a whatsapp notification you are going to follow uh, the same process it's pretty much the same thing but i'm just going to focus on email notification because most people are going to be using email so if you look over here you can see this is the email that is going to be going to uh, the customer when they book an appointment this is email they are going to receive and then this one is email that is going to be going to the staff when they receive an appointment if a customer select them as their service provider when they are booking the appointment so this is for new appointment and this is for reschedule appointment and this is for appointment approved and this is for pending appointment so you can go ahead and check any of these boards that you want them to receive and then you can go in here and write the email using this short tag that they provided for you here these ones are for appointment information this is for uh, service information and this is for customer information this is for staff this is for location and this is for company and this is for zoom information so this is pretty much simple to do i'm going to show you an example how to do that let me quickly create one so i can show you how to do that so to create this email notification pretty much all you have to do is to give this uh email subject a title so this is a new appointment and this is going to your customer you can just say appointment details or pretty much anything you want to say this is just an example and then over here you are going to uh, write the email so here this is the example that i just gave you here you can see hi customer name this is going to say hi and say the name of the customer and here you can see i got this short tag from here if you go here you can see customer information so i just copied this customer name only their first, uh, full name or if you want to use only the first name you can copy this one or if you want to use only the last name you can copy this one so once you copy it you're going to come in here and paste it and here i said you have successfully scheduled an appointment for a service name then i went to the service here and then i i take the service name if i want to add the price i can also copy the price and add it here if i want to add the duration i can also copy the duration and then i'll just paste it here this is just an example and then i'll now say your appointment will take place on a appointment date and i go to the appointment information right here and then i copy the appointment date and then i also copy the appointment location name and then the service duration this is i copied all that from here this is how you use this short tag then when this email will be sent out it will use the information from the booking panel and fill these informations up so this is basically how you use this short tag you can write the email and make it as long as you want and then you can use any of this short tag here that you want just make sure you use it properly put it in a sentence so that it looks more professional and here you can see i said thank you for choosing i just choose the company name i scroll down here and then i choose the company name you can put the company website the phone number as well if you want so as you can see this is just for new appointments and then once you finish you are going to go ahead and click on save changes and if you want to send this to a staff as well you can go ahead and do the same thing let me just show you an example of what you can send to a staff so to compose a staff email all you need to do is to click on this staff button here and then we are going to say maybe new appointment or something 
and then the body of the email you can see here that i said hi staff name and then you're just going to copy the staff name short tag and then you put it here and then we would like to inform you that you have a confirmed service name appointment location appointment date at appointment start time the appointment is added to your staff calendar then if they log into their staff calendar they will not see the appointment will not say best regard the company name so this is just an example you can go ahead and customize this however you want it and then once you uh, finish you are going to click on save changes you can also do the same thing with any of these uh, options that you have here this this one that i gave you as an example is just for the new appointment and then once you finish that you are going to click on save changes so now let's go to the next option the next one we have here is invoices right so if you want to create an invoice for your customer this is how you can do it you can just click on add an invoice and then you are going to do the same thing give it a name and then you are going to use the short tags to write the information that you want in here and then once you finish you're going to click on save changes so we're going to head over to appearance so basically for appearance this is how your dashboard is going to look you can see right now that this is my default style this is the one i'm currently using so if you want to use a different one you can go ahead and select the one that you want to use here or if you want to create your own style you can go ahead and create a new style and when you finish you are going to go ahead and click on save over here but for now i'm just going to stick with the default one so the next option here is custom forms so you can create a custom form for your booking uh, panel so let's say you want to add a custom form for example let's say you want to add something like maybe uh, you want to add privacy policy or something like that this is how you can do that and anything you add here is going to show up on your form when your client is trying to book uh, the appointment so I'm going to give this one a name so maybe I'm going to give this one something like maybe privacy policy and then once you give it a name you're going to select the services that you want this form to apply to so I'm going to select all the services that we have so that anybody that wants to book any of these services this form is going to apply to them and now i'm going to select uh i'm going to take a link and then i'm going to drop it here and once you put a link here and then over here on the right side this is where you are going to put the label uh if i say uh, privacy here so for example if you want to add something like please read and agree to our privacy policy you can type that in here and that is going to show like this and then i'm going to just copy the privacy policy that we have here and then i'm going to uh, copy that and i'm just going to go back here and put the link so now that we have this link here if i click on save it's going to show privacy policy like this and then it's going to show on the front end then if you want to and you can see now that this says privacy policy so if i click on it i can actually change this label to privacy policy and then it's going to look like this and then i'm going to add one more label maybe i'm going to add like a check box so that people can actually check the box to agree to the privacy policy and then this information that i have here i'm going to uh, copy it i'm going to leave this one blank maybe i'm just going to cut this out and then i'm going to go back to this check box and then over here on the label i'm going to uh, leave it blank and then here on the help text i'm going to paste in this test in here i'm going to say please check the box to agree to our privacy policy and then i'm going to make it required so if they don't select it they're not going to be able to uh, book the appointment so i'm going to add a choice here so over here i'm just going to say i agree and then it's going to look like this and then i'm going to click on save changes when we go on the front end you're going to see what this looks like so that is basically it for the custom forms and then the last thing here is the settings so under the settings we have a lot of things that we're going to go through and then the first one is the general setting and then here the general setting is going to show the time slot so this is going to be the time slot between uh appointment so maybe the time slot will be like maybe an hour or maybe 30 minutes but for some reason i'm going to select uh, 30 minutes and then if you want to set the time slot at the service duration you are going to enable this and it's going to set the time slot as the service duration but i don't want to do that so i'm going to leave this disabled and then the minimum time required for booking you can change that this is disabled that means people can book appointment anytime that they want but if you change this to maybe like uh i don't know maybe like uh change this to maybe one day maybe you want them to book one day ahead of time and then that means one day like this i select one day that means uh, they are not going to be able to book appointment maybe 10 hours or maybe five hours before the appointment and then the limited booking days is going to be 365 days that's completely fine and then you can select your weekdays from here your day will start from sunday or monday you can see here that my day starts and uh, my week starts on sunday so and you are going to select the time here as well so i prefer the 24 hours so i'm going to leave that like that 
and then default appointment status is going to show approved immediately after they book the appointment if you want to change it to pending this is where you are going to do it but i'm going to leave my on approved and then if you want to show time slot in client time zone you are going to check this box but i want a client to use my own time zone because i'm the one that is going to be providing the services and then if you want to add google map api this is where you are going to add it and then if you want to activate google recapture this is where you are going to do that as well you're going to turn this on and then you're going to get your site key and your site secret key and you're going to enter it here and then from here if you want an admin to book an appointment outside the working hours you can go ahead and activate this bus and then only register users can book an appointment if you turn this on that means your client will have to register on your website before they can book an appointment so this is not recommended so i don't really recommend this uh, so that if someone don't want to sign up but they still want to use your services they can go ahead and do that as well so once you finish here you are going to click on save changes we're going to click on the front end panel and this is the front panel this is the steps that your clients are going to go through when they want to book an appointment if you don't want them to see the locations you are going to turn off location so let's say if you just have one location there's no point displaying the location there because there's only one location anyways if you only have one staff you can just turn this off as well but i'm just going to leave all of them on for now so you know what they look like and then you can hide the location address if you want and then for the staff you can see here you can show the staff uh, phone number and email address if you want or you can just click on don't show any information at all and then if you want to enable any staff this is basically for uh, someone that have multiple staffs let's say if you have more than one staff and then uh, if your client does not know which staff to select they can just select any staff and that any staff will be automatically assigned to the list uh, to the list assigned by the day or you can choose any of the option here they can just get assigned to the most assigned by the day so you can choose any of these options here that is totally up to you and then for the services and the extra services if you don't want to show extra services so if a service does not have extra service skip this step that means uh, if you have this on any service that does not have extra service they are not going to give them option to select an extra service because there's no extra service to select and then the time and date you can choose the time here as well so here you can choose whether to show the start time and the end time so for example i want to show only the start time and i want to show the end time and then you can hide the number of available slots here if you want but i'm just going to leave that on and then for the information here you are going if you want to separate the first name and last name input you are going to uh, click this box and then if you want to make the email field required you are going to select this box and if you also want to make the phone number field required you are going to select this box as well and here you can choose your default uh, country code so here you can see we have a US flag here so maybe since I'm in Canada maybe I want to change this to Canada and then I'm going to scroll down here I will find Canada and then I'll select that and then I'll click on save changes and then for the confirmation here you can hide the payment method section if you want or you can hide the coupon section if you want so let's say for example if you're not offering coupon or gift card you can click on any of these buttons to hide them but i'm going to leave them on for now so that you guys can see what they look like when we're actually testing this out and the finish you are going to have these options here this is where you can hide the add to calendar button if you don't want them to be able to add this to their calendar you are going to turn this off and then to start a new appointment button you can hide this one if you don't want them to see that button to be able to click in and start a new appointment or you can just leave it on and then hide the confirmation number there's no reason for you to hide a confirmation number from your client so i'm just going to leave this thumbed off and then starting confirmation number is one so i'll just add like maybe 0001 here so that way it will start uh, from 0001 and then the second one will be 0002 0003 and then i'm just going to click on save changes and then the next thing we're going to go through is the customer panel so the customer panel is basically uh if you want to enable this and this will allow the customer to be able to that means you're going to create a separate page for this customer panel so that customer can click on sign in and then they will be able to log into their account to reschedule their appointment or maybe to cancel their appointment or maybe to delete their account so if you want to do that this is where you are going to do it and you can put a time restriction to the change of appointment so maybe after they booked an appointment after maybe uh, one day or two days they will not be able to change it again so something like that you can go ahead and enable this if you want and then i'm going to show you how to set it up later in this video 
and then for the labels is going to be all these labels that you see here you can see right now that we have location one location two you can see this is location if you want to change this uh, from location to something else you can go ahead and do it after you do that you're going to click on uh, this uh, check mark here and that is going to save this location the center is going to be for staff you can just maybe change it to our staff something like that like this so now we change it from staffs to our staffs so you get the idea you can go ahead and click on this pencil icon and change this to whatever you want and then the same thing goes with this have a question that we have here so the same thing goes with all this button that we have over here you can see this is next step if you want to change that to something else you can change it or this back button here maybe you want to change it to something that says something like go back so now it's going to show go back instead of back so you can pretty much change this to anything you want you get the idea and then once you finish these changes you're going to click on save changes and then the next one is going to be payments and this is where you are going to select uh, the currency that you want to use for your payment so right now you can see it's showing a uh, us dollar so maybe i want to change it to canadian dollar because i'm in canada so i'm going to change this to canadian dollar you can change it to your own currency whichever currency that you want or you can go ahead and use us dollars and this is the currency format this is the currency symbol if you if you are using a different symbol you are going to put that symbol here and this is the price format so all these things are pretty much good just leave everything the way it is and from here if you want the customer to be able to pay only the deposit amount you can turn this off but there's no point doing this if anybody wants to pay the full amount they can go ahead and do that as well so i'm going to leave this on and then i'm going to click on save changes and then the payment method here you are going to select all any of the payment method that you want here so this is a local payment if you select this local payment that means clients will be able to book an appointment without leaving a deposit local payment basically means paying with cash when they arrive at the appointment location and you don't want that uh, some people will book an appointment and they will not show up so you want a client to be able to uh, pay ahead of time they will leave a deposit so that if they don't show up for the appointment they will not get that deposit back the deposit is going to be non refundable if you miss your appointment so here you get all these options you can use square payments if you want you just need to grab the access token and the location you can use paper or stripe but in this tutorial i'm just going to be covering stripe and paper because basically a uh, square and uh, stripe they are pretty much the same process and the woocommerce payment as well but i'm not going to be using that i'm going to be using only stripe and paper so i'm going to go ahead and turn these two on so now let's go ahead and set up stripe all you really need to do is log into your stripe account and get the publishable key and also the secret key stripe is completely free to use it's free to sign up the only thing is that when you make a transaction you get charged a transaction fee so you can go ahead and create a stripe account if you don't have one but if you have one already you can go ahead and log into your account you can see here that i already have a stripe account and once i log in you are going to land to a page like this you can see this is uh, my stripe account and then all you really need to do here is go over here and click on developers and then from here you are going to click on api keys and then from here you can see that we have uh api keys here we have different type of keys we have life key you can see right now it's saying that i'm viewing the life key and i really don't want to uh, use the life key so what i want to do here is that i want to use the test key like the test data so that i can use it to show you guys how this works so i'm going to click on this button here that shows uh, view test data or i can just click on this button here that basically the same thing you can see it turn this one on too and from here all i need to do is to copy the publishable key for the this api and then i'm going to go back here and then i'm going to paste that key in here and then i'll go back here and then i'm going to review the secret key and then i'll copy that key as well and then go back here to our website and then i'm going to paste the secret key here and then i'll click on save changes and then once you're done with that you can head over to paypal and then paypal here there's two options one of them is live and then the other one is sandbox but for your own case since you are building a live site you are going to select the live key instead of using the sandbox so i'm going to use the sandbox for this example so now what we need to do is to head over to paper paper is also free you can go ahead and sign up for a paper account if you don't have one paper account is also free but make sure that you're signing up for the business account because there's two type of paper account one is personal and one is business if you sign up for the personal account you're not going to have access to the api keys because it's not for business but if you sign up for the business account once you log into your business paper account you're going to land to a page 
that look exactly like this or maybe similar or something like that and then you are going to click on developers over here and then that will bring you to this page right here and then from here all you need to do you can see that it says here business dashboard you hover over your name and then you click on dashboard and that will take you to uh, this developer dashboard right here and now you can see api credentials is showing here already if you are not seeing it you can go over here on the left and then you are going to click on my apps and credentials and that will open this page right here you can see right now that we have the uh, i have the sandbox selected but in your case make sure that you have live key selected you can see here that i have two live keys available here that i've created in your case you're just going to click on create an app and then you're just going to follow the same process we're going to go through right now so i'm going to create a sandbox app so i'll just click on create an app and it's going to open a box like this you're just going to give your app a name and then you're going to select uh, this first option here to accept payment as a seller and then you are going to pretty much click on create an app that's it is that simple the same process when you are creating a new app so now that we've created that i'm going to go over here i've given the app name booknetic so i'm going to click on this booknetic one this is my example sandbox account and once you get the app it's going to show up like this all you really need to do is to copy this client id like this and then you are going to go back here and paste in your client id over here and then go back to paypal and then you are going to click on show secret code and then you are going to copy this code right here and then you are going to go back to your website and then you are going to paste the client secret here and then click on save changes that's pretty much all you have to do and you are done with setting up your payment and now when your customer wants to book a service on your website they will have the option to pay with paper or stripe after they make the payment you are going to receive the payment on your paper account or you are going to receive the payment on your stripe account so that's pretty much how easy this is to set up and then for email setting this is how you are going to send email to your client so this is the uh, sender email that your client is going to receive and this is the sender name that your client is going to receive so in this case you have two options you can use the smtp or you can use the wordpress mail i recommend using the smtp because if you are using the wordpress mail sometimes the email will not go to your client inbox it will go straight to their spam box that means they're not going to be able to receive that email so i would recommend using smtp if you don't know how to set that up let me know in the comment section below and then i'm going to create another tutorial showing you guys how to set up smtp or you can also go and watch this preview tutorial that i made about booknetic in this tutorial Tutorial, I also showed how to set up this SMTP. It's the same thing. It was a booknetic tutorial. It's exactly the same thing. So if you go and watch that video, you'll be able to find out how you can also create uh, this SMTP. It's very easy to do. I could create another video, just five minutes video, showing you guys how to do it. Let me know in the comment section below. Or you can just watch this video and then you can do it yourself. It's very easy and it's very simple to do. But for now, since I'm not going to be setting this up in this tutorial, I'm just going to select WordPress mail and then here I'm going to add the sender email and the sender name so the sender name is probably going to be your name or your company name so for this tutorial the company name is wp therapy so i'm going to type wp therapy here and then the email address is going to be so the email address is going to be info at wp and then once you finish that you're going to click on save changes and then here we have a few integrations if you want to integrate your google calendar to your booknetic dashboard so that whenever someone book an appointment it will be automatically added to your calendar you're going to enable this and then you're going to go ahead and get your google client id your secret id i'm filling all this information here and then you're good to go but for this tutorial i'm going to disable it because i don't really need that and then depending on the type of services that you are providing maybe in your case maybe you want to also add zoom meeting to your uh, appointment booking so that when your client book maybe you are doing like an online consultation and you want to add a zoom link to your meeting this is how you are going to do that you are going to come here and enable it and then you are going to go and get the api key and the secret key and then put in a topic for the meeting and then put meeting description and then you can also set a random password for the meeting and then you are going to click on save changes if you don't know how to get your zoom api keys i'm going to show you how to do that quickly so what you need to do is to go on this website you are going to go to marketplace.zoom.us 
and then once you do that you are going to land on this page right here and then you are going to click on developers over here and then you are going to click on build an app it's going to open this uh, page right here and the app that we need to build is called jwt so you can see here that i've already created an app before so it's going to show view here for me but for your case it's going to show great an app so what you need to do is to click on the button that will say great an app over here and once you click on that button it's going to bring you to this page right here all you need to do is to fill up this page you are going to uh, give the app a name you can see here that i say wp lifestyle app and then you give it a short description put in your company name put your name put your email address and then these ones are optional if you want to add them you can go ahead and add them if you don't want to add them you can skip them and go to continue and then once you get to the next page you are going to add the app credentials and then you are going to go to the feature and then you are going to click activation once you activate that then you are going to copy your code you are going to copy the api key and paste it here and copy your secret key and paste it here put your zoom meeting put your description and then you are pretty much done so click on save changes so this is not really necessary if you are not using zoom but if you are you can go ahead and set this up you also have the option to connect your booking software with facebook and google just by clicking on enable here getting your id and your secret key and adding it here the same thing goes with google you can also do the same thing over here if you want but i'm going to skip those in this video because i don't really need it but i'm going to disable it i'm going to click on disable and that's pretty much all the settings that we are going to go through today so i'm going to click on go back to wordpress over here so now that we are back on wordpress i'm going to hover over here and then i'm going to open the site so this is what the site looks like right now we don't have the button anywhere so i want to use this button as the book button but before we do that i want to create a page for the booking page so i'm going to go here and then i'm going to add a new page i'm going to go to pages and then i'm going to add a new page i'm just going to call the page book appointment so i've called the page book appointment and then if you want to edit this page with dv you are going to go ahead and use dv thing to edit this page or maybe you want to edit it with the default wordpress editor you are going to go ahead and do that or maybe you want to edit it with elementor it doesn't matter which page builder you are using you can go ahead and do the same thing so what i'm going to do now i'm going to publish this page so i'm going to use the default editor i'm going to click on use default editor and then it's going to open like this and then i'm going to click on this plus button here and then i'm going to cite bookmetic so now that i cite for bookmetic you can see that we have the bookmetic panel and we have the customer panel so the one we need is the bookmetic panel so once i have that selected i'm going to publish this page and then if i click on view page right now click on view page it's going to open a new link here now you can see that we have the uh, bookmetic page right here so you can see what that looks like and also maybe if you don't want to use your default editor you can also use dv to build this page so for example i can go ahead and add a new page i will go back here and then i'm going to add a new page so i'll call it book appointment number two and then i'm going to publish it and then i'm going to edit this one with the dv builder so you can see that you can pretty much use any builder that you want uh, to build this so once you open the uh, visual builder for dv i'm going to add a one column row here and then from here i'm going to look for the short code i'm just going to type code and this is the uh, short code that i need and then you are going to paste the bookmetic short code in here if you don't know what the code is you are going to go back here to let's go back to uh, wordpress dashboard and then we are going to go to pages and then we are going to find the first one that we created book appointment and we are going to click on edit and once you edit it you can see right here this is the short code here it's basically just bookmetic inside the bracket just copy that and then you can come back here and you can paste that code in here you can see that it's loading right here you can see that it's going to show right here like this and click on save changes so that's this is pretty much it so if you use your page builder to do it maybe it's going to give you more flexibility maybe you want to add like a background color you can go ahead and do that a background image for example right now if i want to add like a background gradient it's going to look like this so you get the idea this is just for fun this is not really like any design maybe you just want to use like an image at the background whatever you want to do you can just select this image option here and then you can just add a background image you can come in here and choose any image you want for your background maybe we want to add this as the background image and maybe we also want to add like an overlay or something on it we can add uh blend mode we can add it maybe to overlay 
and then you can choose your overlay color you can see right now we have gradient color but we can just go over here we are going to go back to the image and then we are going to make sure we turn this button on we are going to place the background image above the gradient like this and then we are going to come back here and then we are going to maybe delete this gradient and now you can see that we have a background color here which is black manipulate this by just uh, reducing the opacity like this maybe you just re reduce the opacity like this so this is basically what you can do you can just play around with it because using your page builder will give you more flexibility we well, see how different this one is looking so i'm going to go ahead and save this and then i'm going to click on exit visual builder so what i can do now is i can actually copy this url here for this page and then i'm going to go back here to the dashboard and then i'll go to dv because right now i'm currently using a custom dv header that i built with dv builder so now i'm going to go to dv and then i'm going to come inside here this is my global header which is the header that we are using i'm going to click on the pencil to edit it and now that we're inside here you can see this is the button that we have here i'm going to click on that button and then i'm going to change the button to book appointment okay so i'm gonna head and change the button to book appointment you can change it to anything that you want and then you can click on the link and then the button link i'm going to paste the uh appointment page link so i'll paste that in here and then if i want that to open in a new window and then i'm going to select that here but i want it to open in the same window so i'm going to leave that here then i'll click on save changes here so i'm going to close this and then i'm going to come back here and click on save all changes and now if i go back here and refresh this page let me go back to the home page so from here if i click on book an appointment this is going to take us directly to this appointment page so now that we have the appointment page here and you already know how to add this on your website so let's go ahead and test this out so this is what the appointment booking thing looks like you can see here we have two locations we have location number one and then we have the staffs we have one staff here or you can just select any staff and then you have the services here we have the physiotherapy which also have like a sample which is like a, an extra service you can select and then you can go to the next and then you can select the day and select the time and go to the next and then from here you can fill in your information and then you can book the appointment i'm going to say steven and last name and then you can put your email and then your phone number and then here you can see privacy policy you can click on it and it's going to open the privacy policy like this and you can read it and then from here you can click on i agree right this and then you can go to next so if you don't click this box if you click on next it's going to show red it's going to say please fill all the required form once you check the box and then you can go to next and then from here you can choose to pay the full amount or you can pay the deposit you have the option to pay with credit card or you have the option to pay with paper so this is basically how you can use this appointment uh, booking plugin if you want to go back you can also click on back to go all the way back maybe to select a different location maybe you want to go back to this location select this uh, staff and then maybe select a sports injury rehabilitation something different and then go ahead and select different time you fill this information again so you can see how simple and easy this is and this is basically how you can add a booking service to your website so if you're a service provider and you want people to be able to book uh, through your website this is how you can add it using the book Native plugin and then for those of you that watched my previous tutorial on multi-vendor appointment booking website this is exactly how your client dashboard is going to look if this video was helpful to you one way or the other please smash that like button subscribe to my youtube channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified every time i upload a video thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you next time bye bye